What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with yet another quick Hackintosh tip for you. This time on how to create a Fusion Drive on your Hackintosh. Now what is a Fusion Drive? Basically it's something that Apple has just recently come out with within you know, the last year or so and it's a combination of a solid state drive and a hard drive into one logical volume that the operating system uses. What's great about this is that it's a smart partition. It takes files that you recently accessed and moves them over to the solid state drive and keeps everything else on the hard drive. This allows the user to get great speeds for files that they most frequently read and write but still have that storage of a traditional hard drive because as we all know, solid state drives are very expensive for the amount that you get. Basically what this is going to leave us with is one partition to OS X that's actually made up of two hard drives, of which is slower than an all out solid state drive, but features more storage than a solid state drive, and is also faster than a traditional hard drive. So before going on with this guide, I do want to say that this is based off of a thread over at Tony Mac x86. This is a very good tutorial by Neil Hart right here, so be sure to give him a shout out if, you, you know, feel, if you're feeling ambitious. But um, I just wanted to go ahead and recognize him because without him, this tutorial would not be happening. But you know what? I figured why not make a video version? With this tutorial comes only one disclaimer, and that's you may or may not lose iCloud functionality when you do this. If you're familiar with a RAID 0 on a Hackintosh, you'll know that you actually do lose iCloud functionality, and that's something to do with the bootloader. But with this tutorial, it's actually pretty similar to getting a RAID 0 up and running. But some people have reported that iCloud was totally lost, and others report that it still works. So if iCloud is something that's important to you, you may want to try this before you go ahead and just make it, you know, your default volume. Down in the video description, you guys will run into a little text document like this that you can download. I've kind of put this together, and right at the top here, you can see things we'll need. We do need a working OS X installation, which will not be used in the Fusion Drive set. As you can see right over here, I have a Macintosh SSD, which is my current boot volume. I have a 2 terabyte spinning hard drive, and this ML backup is another solid state drive. This will not be used, but is required because we need an OS X installation for all the terminal commands and to be cloned, whereas these two drives will actually be part of the array. And speaking of these two hard drives, they both have to be blank, which we'll get to in just a second. And in this Fusion Drive folder here, which I will not be uploading because this should not be redistributed, go ahead and head over to Tony Mac to download this. But you will need these three things. You'll need Carbon Copy Cloner, or you know, Super Duper, or basically just a, a cloning application. You're going to need Chimera, which is the bootloader, or Chimera for my longtime viewers. You're also going to need a program called Pacifist, which will actually allow us to extract the contents of this and put them where we need them. You're also going to need some time, and the most important, some Hackintosh juice. Once you have all you need, we can go and move on with the tutorial. So the first thing you want to do is go to Disk Utility and make sure the two drives that you'll be using in the array are formatted as HFS partitions. It's very simple to do. It's going to go, I'll do uh, mount line backup here for example. Make sure that it's OS X Extended Journal. Give it a name, which at right now doesn't matter because it will be overwritten anyway. Go ahead and erase, and there you go. Just make sure you do that to both drives that are going to be in the array. And obviously before doing this, make sure you have nothing on there that you need backed up. Do that before now because at this point, you're kind of out of luck. Now once your drives are formatted and ready to go, let's go and open up Pacifist. As you can see here, I'm using the free version. This is the unregistered version. That's fine. If you want to be you know, ambitious and donate this 20 bucks to the developer, that would be awesome of you. It really helps the guy out, I'm sure. But once we get past this little countdown, go ahead and click through. And we're going to open that Chimera package that I referenced earlier. So mine can be found right here. And we'll go ahead and click open. And now once this is open, we're going to go to contents, user, standalone. And in this i386 folder, we're going to extract that to the desktop. Click extract. And now you have to enter a password, which is very important. I'll say this now, that you have a password set. A little later within this tutorial, we'll be using some pseudo terminal commands, which require a password. A simple blank password will not do it. So if need be, come here to system preferences, using groups, and change your password. But now that that i386 folder has been extracted, double click it, and you need to copy boot, boot0, and boot1h to the desktop. And now for the part you've all been waiting for, the terminal commands. Let's go ahead and open up terminal. And right now I'd like to make it a point that if you download the text file in the description, this is going to make your life a lot easier because this has all the terminal commands all typed out that you'll need. Of course you will need to modify a couple of them to match your system. But with that said, let's go ahead and copy the first one, which is disk util list. This is simply going to list all the active partitions and drives on our system. And now this part here is very important. I highly recommend unplugging any drives that will not be using in this tutorial. This will really help reduce confusion as you really need to pay attention to these up here. This disk 1, disk 0, uh, you know, these partitions 1, 2, 3. 
That's very important to this tutorial. So the more drives you have plugged in, the more confusing it's going to be, especially if they're all the same size or have the same brand name or anything like that. But what you want to take from this screen is the drives that are going to be in the Fusion Drive. This drive we're booted into right now, this Macintosh SSD. As I said earlier, we will not be using this in the Fusion Drive race. So anything that has to do in this, in my case, with disk zero, I don't need to pay attention to. But it's important to note that your drives could be different. Maybe your disk zero or the drive you're currently booted into is disk one or disk two. So it's very, very important that you pay attention to that. Now for this next terminal command, we have disk util CS create fusion drive disk one disk two. This disk one corresponds to the first drive in your array and disk two corresponds to the second drive in the array. Keeping in mind that this does not have anything to do with your current boot drive. Once you do that, go ahead and hit enter. As you can see right there, it unmounted the first disk. It's going to do the same thing with the second drive and it's going to create one drive. This process typically takes, you know, a minute or two. So just give it a little bit of time. And now once that finishes, you'll be greeted down here with something that says finished core storage operation. That's fine. The next terminal command is disk util CS list. And that's going to list us out what we just created. Now from this screen, what you want to take here is this logical volume group, this little identifier. Go ahead and copy and paste this. I would recommend into a new text edit document. So do that. And we'll save that for a rainy day, which actually isn't too far away. So now this next terminal command here is a doozy. You definitely don't want to have to type this guy out all by yourself. Disk util, core storage, create volume. Now as you can see right here, I have it outlined with asterisks, if that's how you say that word. <laughs> Logical group ID here. And asterisk. Up until there is where you need to paste this guy. So what I would do here, go back to those asterisks, I think that's how you say that word, and just simply backspace. just like that. And now I go ahead and paste that right in there. And if you scroll over here with the arrow keys a little more, we have the name of the drive. You can make this whatever you want. I'm just going to call this Fusion Drive. 100% at the end, hit enter. And that didn't take very long. I'll go ahead and I'll scoot both of these windows over. Now we have a drive here called Fusion Drive. And now from the terminal window, you have something here called Core Storage LVUUID. Go ahead and copy this once again to a text edit document for a rainy day. And now just as a test to make sure that we actually created the new volume successfully, go ahead and type one more time disk util list. And at the bottom here, you should see how before we had just 0, 1, and 2. We now have disk 3 here, which is Fusion Drive, 2.1 terabytes, which is exactly what we were looking for. So what I would do now just for reference is take, do a command A, copy and paste that, the whole entire thing just to reference later in case we need it into a text edit document. I would go ahead and save this to the desktop and just call it uh, terminal goodies, maybe anything you'd like. And once you do that, we're going to go ahead and reboot the system. Now that we've restarted, what you want to see is the one main drive that you're booted into, as well as the fusion drive we just created. What we're going to do next is clone all the data from our boot drive onto the fusion drive. So to do this, I'm going to open carbon copy cloner. You maybe use super duper or we you know some other application of your choosing. And what we want to do here is select the source, it's going to be Macintosh SSD, destination, of course, the Fusion Drive, clone, enter that extremely secure password. And, you know, if you have a ton of apps and things like that, this will take longer. But for me, this is, you know, just a pretty, pretty clean installation of OS X, so this really shouldn't take all that long. While this is going, one thing you might want to do is go into your boot drive, go to the root. We're going to copy this extra folder right here to the desktop. And we can close out of this window. We're going to open this up right here. And this org chameleon boot.plist, we're going to open that up. And actually what we want to do is open this up with text edits. We're going to go to other, go to applications folder, type T, go right down to text edit. And we're going to click open. And if you're familiar with the Hackintosh world, this is nothing new to you. What we're going to do here though, is what could potentially break iCloud for you. So be kind of careful when you do this. If it does break iCloud for you, I believe you can just go back in and delete this. But honestly, I'm not too sure. But what we're going to do is we're going to copy this line right here into the kernel flag section. So this right here could be totally different depending on your system. But me personally, my system needs these in order to boot up. So just and after any terminal commands, if any, just hit a space and we're going to paste that. And after this equals sign, that's where we come into the terminal goodies folder. And right up here, this core storage LV UUID number that we copied earlier, all we're going to do is copy and paste that right after the equal sign. And that's fine how it is. We're going to save that and we're going to close out of it. And as you can see here, Carbon Copy Cloner finished successfully. And honestly, I think that's a pretty good speed. We, we transferred about nine and a half gigabytes in just under two minutes. So that shows the speed of both the boot drive and the fusion drive. 
pretty neat stuff. So we're going to close out of Carbon Copy Cloner. And now we do have one more terminal session ahead of us. Not too hard, but has to be done. So down here, what we're going to do is we're going to change the directory that terminal points to the desktop. So we're going to do that. And basically for this next step, what we're going to be doing is copying all of these files here to the root of the Fusion Drive. Now this is the part where you need to have a password on your account. So if you don't have one set, you need to do that now. So we're going to type sudo su, which gets us into super sudo. Go ahead and type that extremely secure password, which will not show up here as you type it. But once you know you've typed it, just hit enter and you'll be good to go. Once again, we're going to type disk util list. And this is a good time to make sure that none of these numbers have changed. As you can see here, mine did. My Macintosh SSD is no longer disk 0, but is disk 1. The two drives that are in the array right now are 0 and 2. Not 0 and 1, not 1 and 2, etc, etc. But the Fusion drive itself now is disk 3. And so now we'll go ahead and do the first terminal command here. Now before you go ahead and hit enter, this x1 here at the end corresponds to the first drive in the array. So as you can see from here, what I just said is mine is disk 0. So we can take out this whole last part and just put disk 0. Hit enter. That's fine. And now we're going to do the same thing except for disk 2. Moving down to the next terminal commands, go ahead and copy and paste this one. And now this is our disk. As you can see here, now we have that same x1 in quotes. That corresponds to the first drive. Anytime uh, throughout these next terminal commands you see x1, that corresponds to the first drive. x2 corresponds to the second. So as, as previously mentioned right here, my x1 is disk 0 in this case, which once again could be totally different for yours, but I will put our disk 0 as 3. As you can see, you'll get some output like this, two records in, two records out, uh, 10, 24 bytes transferred in, whatever. That just basically lets you know that it did indeed work. We're going to do the same exact thing, but instead of 0, once again, we're going to do our disk 2, S3. Actually, I kind of messed this up here. There we go. Our disk 2, S3. And we're going to get some very similar output, which is what we want. And now what we're going to do is copy the boot and the extra folder to the helper partitions. That's with the, all these next terminal commands here. So once again, replace this x1 with, in my case, 0. And once you do that one, you can actually see right here that it actually did mount on the desktop. That's pretty nice. It's what you want. Go ahead and do this next guy here. These next few don't need to change anything, so there's that one right there. What you can do is actually open this up and you'll see what happens. You can see right there the extra folder got actually copied over. Now I believe you could just you know mount these and just move them, click and drag them, but I prefer to just do it this way because this way I know for a fact it'll work. And basically this next terminal command is just unmounting the drive we just mounted. So once I hit enter, you'll see this drive go away. And now we're going to do the same exact thing but with the second drive in the array. So once again, come down to here, disk 2, S3. As you can see there, it was mounted. Copy this next terminal command here. I'm not sure if this will happen to you, but as you can see here, I didn't even hit enter and it was trying to execute this. So if this does happen, you'll need to type it by hand. Disk util unmount disk 2s3. And once you do that, you should be good to go. So what you can do is go ahead and close out a terminal. And I'm simply going to reboot the system and see if it works. So I booted up the computer the first time after creating the Fusion Drive and I went into the BIOS because it's still going to be configured to boot into the normal drive first. So what I'm going to do is go into the boot options right here and I'm going to tell it to boot from any drive other than the original one, which in my case we only have those other two plugged in. So we can change this later to do this automatically every time, but for now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit enter. You may actually get a little error there, but it actually still boots up as you can see. And I don't know if you will be able to zoom in by the time this goes, but yeah, I kind of missed it. But it didn't indeed say Fusion Drive 2. There, I believe there was also a Fusion Drive 1. That would just be if I told it to boot into the solid state drive instead of the hard drive. But when we copied over the extra folder in the bootloader, there is one on each drive. So you can boot into either one and it'll still get you into the same place. But what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and focus this on my other display. And I'll go up to about this Mac. And I'll zoom in here and hopefully we have the results we're looking for. Yep, as you can see right there at the bottom, the startup disk is in fact Fusion Drive. Look at that, it worked. So what, I, what I'm going to do now, which is what I'm sure you guys want to see, is a speed test. So I'll do that right now. I have an application right here, disk speed test from Blackmagic, pretty common. And I'm going to go ahead and start it. So wow, as you can see here, very respectable speeds. We have almost 500 megabits per second on the right. 
and drum roll about actually yeah about 500 on read as well so we have symmetrical speeds of about 500 megabits per second which is pretty darn good and the best part about this is if you come up here um, I'll go ahead and I'll zoom out a little bit on this if you come up here and click on the, um, the fusion drive and you go ahead and quick look at we'll see how much space we have the drive is that fast and we have two terabytes of space so a fusion drive is definitely a cool way to go on the Hackintosh and what I'll do right now is I'll see if the iCloud is in fact broken so I'll go ahead and I'll stop this speed test here and I'll go to log into iCloud and we'll see what happens As you can see for me, iCloud actually does indeed work. So iCloud, well, I was able to get in just fine right here. I'm not actually going to sign in. But if it gets to this screen here, you're good. You're golden. So very cool stuff right there. It may be different for you. Look at that piece of engineering. So good. But <laughs> regardless, this may or may not work for you, like the whole iCloud thing. But if you want a Fusion Drive and you don't want to pay the Apple Premium to get it in a new iMac or something like that, it will indeed work perfect in your Hackintosh. Hold that thought. I'd actually like to show you guys one last thing and that's how to remove the Fusion Drive if you don't want it. Say if it breaks your iCloud and you really need it. It's going back to the way things were simply is not as easy as you would think. If you come up here to Disk Utility, you'll notice that it does indeed tell you there's a Fusion Drive, but there is no way, no how, you can actually separate this back into two physical drives. What you have to do is go into Terminal, so we'll go and do that, and you have to type Disk Util CS List. And that'll get us back to this screen where it shows everything. And what you need to do is come up here to Logical Volume Group and copy this identifier. Now, actually, you know what? I'll open up Disk Utility so you can actually see what it's doing here. And I'm going to type Disk Util CS Delete, and we're going to paste that identifier. And now what it's going to do is unmount that and get us back to the, exactly the way we started. And of course, it kind of goes without saying, you'll lose any data that was on there because it's simply just going to erase everything that was on there and break it back up into two drives. I thought you guys might like to know that in case you want to go back. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter. Also, be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com, and I hope to see you guys back here soon.